earthquakes in India. If we see the earthquake map of India, we will notice that the Himalayan region is the most earthquake prone region, falling in zones 4 and 5. Along with this, the western part of Gujarat also falls in the same category. A large part of northern, central and western India lies in Zone 3. Thus, collectively, as many as 233 districts of the country lie in Zone 2 to 5. Some of the major earthquakes which have had devastating effects are given here. Koina earthquake of 1967 6.5 on the Richter scale. Latur earthquake of 1933, 6.4 on the Richter scale. Bhuj earthquake of 2001, 7.8 on the Richter scale. Earthquakes are a natural phenomena and therefore unavoidable. But the damage done by earthquakes can be minimized and precious lives saved by simple mitigation methods and preparedness. Japan experiences two mild tremors every day on an average. But the damage is bare minimum because of awareness, mitigation and preparedness. Preparedness for earthquakes The damaging effect of earthquakes can be greatly minimized by taking simple mitigation steps, creating awareness among the people and knowing the do's and don'ts. The Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS, has specified building codes and guidelines for making earthquake-resistant buildings. These are not necessarily very expensive. Construction techniques using simple brick-mortar construction can also be used to build earthquake-safe buildings. Existing buildings can also be made earthquake-safe and simple technique of strengthening called retrofitting. Creating awareness is also an important step because if people know what they should do and what they should not do, it can save precious lives. Given below are the most common do's and don'ts which everyone should know. Do's Drop, cover and hold in event of tremors. Hide yourself under a table or bed and stand in a corner and under the doorway. If you live in a single-storey building, go out immediately into the open. In a multi-storied building, stay where you are. Don't rush to the staircase, use the lift or elevator. If you are in outdoors, rush to an open space, away from trees, signposts and electric poles. Remember, falling objects kill more people than earthquakes. Don'ts Don't use matches, lighters, stuffs or electrical appliances and avoid gas leakages. Don't light your kitchen stove. Don't use phones, except for medical or fire emergency. Shut off power at the control box if there is danger to house wiring. Don't eat or drink anything from open containers near shattered glass. Don't create panic by spreading false rumours. Don't ignore other people in distress if you are not hurt. Assemble outside after the earthquake and do head account to check on the status of the neighbourhood. If you are driving, pull over on the side of the road and stop. Jump out of the car and crouch on the side. Fire It is estimated that fires kill more people than cyclones, earthquakes and floods all put together. Fires are extremely dangerous and burn injuries are highly traumatic. Causes of Fire some of the common causes of fires are heating sources such as coal or electrical heaters, fireplaces, cooking devices such as burners, stoves, ovens used in homes, poor electric wiring or multi-point adapters, use of unauthorized appliances or appliances of local and unsafe make, collection of rubbish and waste materials near homes, offices and factories. In the event of a fire, these add to the fury of the fire. Inflammable and combustible materials such as fuels, gases, solvents, glues, resins and packaging material. Hazardous materials such as explosives used for fireworks and crackers etc. Smoking and carelessly throwing the lighted cigarette butts. Deliberate fires 
caused by antisocial elements, laboratory accidents, etc. Preventive steps and safety measures. Some preventive steps and safety measures are Basic safety rules should be remembered and safe exit or evacuation route should be kept in mind. Storing of inflammable materials in the house should be avoided. Fire extinguishers should be installed in the house and all members of the house should know its use well. Care should be taken to switch off electric points and gas connection before leaving the house. Multi-point electrical adapters should be avoided. Matches and gas lighters etc. should be kept out of reach of children and smoking of self or guests in the house should be avoided as far as possible. Furniture and other domestic items should be placed in such a way that movement does not get restricted. Fires give very little time to move. Before making any attempt to put out a fire, its cause should be known. Pouring water over an electric fire may cause electrocution. Fire department, usually available at phone number 101, should be immediately informed in event of a fire. They should be provided with the exact address and landmarks to reach the place. Face and nose should be covered with a wet cloth in event of a fire to prevent choking by gases present in the smoke. Also, it is better to lie down on the floor and crawl out if possible because hot gases move upwards and fill the top of the room. At least two safety routes should be planned in advance and a practice to move out quickly using these routes should be rehearsed twice in a year. Role of Government in Disaster Management The disaster situation involves a large number of agencies. The government and the communities unite to face the effect of the disaster. Agencies called Civil Society, which include the UN Red Cross, Civil Defence, NCC, NSS, Scouts and Guides, Educational or Social Trusts, Industries, etc., are also part of the Disaster Management Committee. The country's DM plan is a composite plan consisting of plans at various levels such as the community, the village, the district and finally the state. Government DM Planning The government focus on disaster management now incorporates capacity building at the community level by creating awareness and imparting education to the people. This is being done because the community is the first responder in event of a disaster. The community plans are supported by non-government societies and associations such as Red Cross, Civil Defence, NCC, NSS, Scouts and Guides, etc. The levels of the disaster management plans are as follows. DM has become a task of the Home Ministry except Drought Management which is a task of Agriculture Department. The government has allocated officers and ward coordinators at various levels to manage disasters. Find out about the DM in charge of your district. Community DM Planning The community is the first responder to a disaster and also its strength. It is because the community has first-hand knowledge of the local resources, has an idea of the seasonality calendar, is aware of the traditional techniques and methods of rescue, is aware of the local shelters and safety areas, has perfect knowledge of the surroundings, has ability to communicate fluently in local dialect and language. Therefore, with awareness and knowledge, the DM planning at the community level is more beneficial. Planning builds capacity and reduces the risk, thereby resulting in very little damage in event of a disaster. The community DM plan is also called a contingency plan. School DM planning School is a part of the community and a community in itself. The students, teachers, office and other workers all form a small community and hence it should develop a contingency plan to build capacity against disaster. You will learn about the school DM day in the higher class.